Okay. We always measure distance as positive numbers. Since this thing is saying that this distance, whatever it is, is a negative number, then that's a problem. Then we get no solutions. It has nothing to do with the fact that this is a fraction. Fraction distances are great. They're fine. Negatives are the issue. This negative is making life pretty miserable for us. So there's just no x that works. Okay. All right, so let's try maybe look at this one. So if I want to solve this, let's add 7 to both sides. Get this thing. And, oh man, we're in trouble because we have a negative distance. So this has got to be a no solution. No, Sydney, why not? Because when you divide negative, they end up saying negative. Oh, so n plus 2 here. Oh, that's equal to positive 1. Oh, boy, that's actually good. That's a good thing. So this thing is a distance of 1 from 0. Okay, so then what ends make this true? How are we going to finish solving this? Courtney? Let's make two equations. What's inside equals walking to the right one, or what's inside will walk to the left one. And we get what? n is negative 1, or n is negative 3. We solved it, and our two solutions are negative 1 and negative 3. Okay. All right, let's get this last one out of the way here. So let's see, we subtract 4, and we get 2 times n minus 5 is equal to negative 2. So that's 2. Absolute value of m minus 5 is equal to negative 1. So we'll break this into two solution two equations and finish solving. Uh, yeah, so I one person stopped me. We can't split this into two equations because negative distance. So again, we get to the point where there's only absolute value. So we're saying this thing has a distance of 0 of negative 1. Big problem. Negative distance, stop. We can't have negative distance, so we have no solution to this thing. Okay. So in your own words, in your own words, please write down, answer this question. Why is the absolute value of a number of a number never negative? In your own words, jot it down. Because I couldn't have said it any better. Because you can't be a negative distance from zero. I could not have said that any better myself. Okay. So tonight when you're working on the abbreviated homework assignment, you'll be seeing some more of these. And you'll be, after, when it's solving, you'll have to analyze and say, is it possible to get, am I, can I even solve these? So you'll run across a few where your absolute value is negative. And hopefully you'll stop right there and say, can't do it. I'll have to stop. Okay. Um, the last thing is this term called absolute deviation. Okay. This looks a lot like absolute value. It's going to be very, very much related. Um, absolute deviation. Uh, we're going to say uh, the absolute deviation between two numbers. is simply the distance between them. <laughs> the absolute deviation between two numbers is the distance between them. Oh boy. Oh my goodness, I've done that twice now in the last two days. I want to. I will. I want to prove to you that I didn't spell it wrong. 
last hour. I did write the correct two last hour. I, I don't know what's going on with me today. I don't know. The absolute deviation between two numbers is the distance between them. Well, okay, so what does that mean for us? Absolute deviation between two numbers is the distance between them. What does that mean for us? Well, what, uh, what have we been talking about that measures distance? What did we do yesterday that's a measure of distance? Absolute value. So for us, for us, the absolute uh, deviation we can calculate by finding the absolute value of their difference. What's it mean to find a difference? Yes. Or you would, to do that, you would just subtract the two numbers. So we're going to subtract the two numbers, find their absolute value, and we'll call that thing the absolute deviation between them. Okay? So for example, if I say the absolute deviation of x from 7.6, is 5.2. Or the absolute value of the difference of these two numbers is 5.2. Absolute value of x and 7.6, and I'll subtract them, is 5.2. This absolute deviation is telling us to set up this thing. What values of x satisfy this? What x's have an absolute deviation between five of, with 7.6 of 5.2? How do I figure out what those x's are? Let's solve it. So how do we solve this thing? Split the two equations. x minus 7.6 equals 5.2. x minus 7.6 equals negative 5.2. We're solving an absolute value equation here, right? So we'll take what's inside equals positive 5.2. That's walking to the right. Or maybe what we did inside, walk to the left instead. So we'll go to negative 5.2. Solve each of these. And we get x is equal to 12.8. Or adding 7.6, we get x is equal to 2.8. We're going to use absolute deviation more often uh, when we talk about like real life situations. So, like things that could possibly like uh, like vary, where you want some like wiggle room. So, for example, like you, you like engineers use absolute deviation a lot when they're going to like if they're going to try to build like build something large. Like you're not going to always be able to get exactly like the right pressure in something, or you're not going to always get like the right build exactly the right length for every single little part. Um, but if you get it within like a, if you can get the error down to like a little bit, to like a given value, then things tend to work well. This absolute deviation, a lot of the times will like talk about like the error possible in things. So for example, like if we have this leak, this volleyball leak here, and they're trying to, they're got it taken out at a radio ad, and it's two minutes long. They buy a two minute long radio ad. And this ad has an absolute deviation of 0 0.05 minutes, or they bought this two-minute ad, but when they make it, they could maybe go over by a little bit, or they could go under by a little bit. And that wiggle room, that error, is this 0 0.05 minutes. So as long as they, as long as they have this little bit of wiggle room, then they're okay. So find the minimum and maximum, or the the shortest or the longest possible radio ad that I could make with this scenario. Well. I don't know how long my ad's going to go. I don't know how long this advertisement's going to last. But I do know... I do know that my radio ad would like to go exactly two minutes. But I might, I might miss that. I might actually go a little bit above or a little bit below. But I know that the ideal length here is two minutes. 
Okay. How much error could I have in this? Like, how much over or under am I allowed to go? 0 0.05. 0 0.05. Just saying that whatever I, whatever I take, however long mine is, the distance between these two or the difference between them can be at most 0 0.05 minutes. Or I can go from here, the, the difference between these two things can be at most 0 0.05. I can go over by 0 0.25, 0 0.05, or I can go under it. Well, this absolute value equation I got from the absolute deviation of the thing up here, well, this should let me figure out each of those things. So if I solve this, you get two equations, x minus 2 equals 0 0.05, or x minus 2 equals negative 0 0.05. If I solve this, then I get x is equal to... 2.05 or x is equal to 1.95 minutes. I have my two possible values. So that means I can have an error of up to 0 0.05 or my radio I could go somewhere either one of those. Which one's the minimum? Which one's the maximum? How do I know which one's the minimum? The smaller one. So really, this really isn't as different as stuff that we've already been Yeah, it's exact. It's pretty much identical to what we've been doing. It's just now we're going to put it into like a real life context here. So where you to see absolute value? You see absolute value a lot when we're talking about like errors and like deviations from 